Hello everyone, today I want to show how to organize parameters in Touch Designer to keep your networks a little bit more organized and modular. I created this simple example where I used a constant to store the parameters and what I want to show you is an alternative to this. The thing that I don't like of using a constant to store our parameters for our network is that the sliders and the values are very stiff and they are not that modular meaning that we can only add uh, floats and we can also not change the order of our variables. So it's quite static and when you scale up your system, it's just not that helpful, to be honest. So here I added a few parameters, like for example, I can change the color. So you can see that to change the color using a constant, I have to use three channels, which is already quite inconvenient. I have the radius, which you can see that it always goes, uh, the range of this value on the constant always goes from zero to one. And you can see that at some point my radius is too big, so I don't see my circle anymore. I also have a speed. This is uh, attached to this specific constant. And you will see that the moment I go a bit high at one, it's way too much. And if I have it low, I need to go really small, so it's a bit difficult. So I will show you how to create a custom component to create your custom parameters that have a lot more options to be able to create a better setup. Let's create that. I created the same exact network here. It's quite simple. I'm going to make some space. I have a circle that it's being moved by this lookup. And this lookup is basically a uh, two waves. One is the sine wave of period one and the other is the same sine wave of uh, phase dot 25. When you merge them together you can create the lookup and you have this movement through time once you connect a constant and a speed. So you can create this network, it will not take that long. And what I want to create is the same amount of parameters but instead of using a constant I'm going to use a custom component and I'm just going to get like this window here so I know exactly what parameters I have to recreate. So the first thing we need is to add a base and a base is basically an empty component that allows us to use as like a data container. I think that's the best way to think about it. Think about it as a data container um, where in our situation at this moment we will create parameters. To create these parameters we can right click customize a component and this window will appear and this is where we can create a new page for example called settings and you will see that here you have in your component a new page called settings for example let's create a radius parameter so I'm gonna use a float a type and I'm gonna say radius this will be size of one and when I create it I have it right here by default, a float goes from 0 to 1, just like the constant. But the great part of using custom parameters is that we can change this range. As I said before, if we go back to this example, if I change the radius, when it's 1, it's way too big. And when it's 0, of course, it's not there. So we need to have like a minimum and a maximum, ideally. And I think I'm going to use like a 0.2 as a maximum. So here I'm going to type 0.2. And the range minimum, I'm going to type 0.1. Now this parameter is not attached to anything and what we can do is to copy the parameter and I can paste it as a reference in our sphere. And now once I change the radius, you will see that it's changing. But in comparison to the constant, we can control the actual range. We can also control the clamp of this parameter and that means that we will basically have a hard limit on what type of values can go. Let's say that our circle should not go below 0.1 because of our network is necessary that it has that size. And if we want to, don't want to have it bigger than 0.2. If we have the clamp disabled, right? So if it's not toggled on, I can still go below the value of the slider, even though the slider has a specific range. So think that if you want to clamp it, you can use this value and it doesn't matter what I input here, like a minus one, it will always stay at this point uh, one. As I don't have a clamp in the maximum value, if I put three, it will still go to three unless I clamp the value. And this already gives us a lot more control than the normal constant and it allows us to have already a much easier 
control for it. There are many other benefits, for example, the color, as we saw here in the previous example, when we use a constant, we have to use three different channels because a color is composed, as you can see here, of three specific values, the RGB. And then we have to use three different sliders, which this is like, it's not good. <laughs> it's not good at all. So what we can do is to create a new color here and we can say, I'm gonna name my setting as a color. And the great part of using custom parameters is that we have a lot of types. Here, when you have this menu, you will see that you have many different options. And what we would like to use is an RGB value, right? We have, for example, we can store files, we can store folders, we can use header to style our specific uh, setting page. But in our case, we will just use RGB and I name it color and I'm gonna add it. This, uh, then we can just copy it as we did and we can copy it back as a reference into our fill color. And now you will see that it's black. And something that I didn't mention in the radius is that we can also give it a default. You can see now that the default of our color is zero. That's why it's at the zero. But we can give it the default of uh, white, for example, which would be having the three channels at one. And what this allows us is to even have like this color picker directly, which is really useful and you don't have to manually change three sliders. So this is already a great improvement. Another great thing of using custom parameters is that you can drag and drop specific parameters of your network. If we go back to the initial example, uh, we will see that I have one parameter that I called wave type. This wave type is tied to the wave type, basically, and it's assigned. But you will see that when you go to the node, the operator wave, this is set as a menu, but we can set the value of this menu, which in this uh, case is one. But if I change it to zero, it will go as a constant, right? If I now check, it's a constant. If I put it back to one, it will be a sign. And if I put, I don't know, let's say three, let's say what it is, it's a triangle. Well, this is quite difficult to remember what type of wave we are using if I'm using the index of the menu. And that's another reason that using this method is much better. It's because we could create our own menu. And I think this could be the menu or the string menu. I'm not sure. But as I mentioned before, what is great is that you don't really need to know because if you say, I want to have control of this specific type, I can select it and I can drag it to the component editor right here. And then you can select what you want to do. Do you want to bind it as a new master or you want to bind it with a reference? Let's just use references for now. And I think that it bind it, but it's okay. You can just delete the bind. And let's see, delete the expression. And just set references on the source. I did the mistake there. And basically now you will see that it created the actual menu for us. So we didn't even have to do it. So you can see here when you have this parameter that is a type menu, you can even edit it, but we didn't have to add all the options. We just need to drag and drop the actual parameter. And now we have a reference to our base one, which is called wave type. And then I can copy this and I can paste it in the second wave. And now you can see that both of them are set as constant and I can change it back to a sign and it now works. So you already see like quite a bit, a big improvement on it because now we have a menu instead of a, a index of a value. And what I can also do is just to change the, the actual order of this parameter. So for example, I can put it on the top, which is something that using a constant doesn't allow you to. And if you have to delete it and change it, it just, it's just a pain. So that's something also that you can do. So let's do the other parts. I also need the speed. The speed is quite similar as the radius. So I'm going to add another float. I'm going to name it speed. And I'm going to put it here. I'm going to say the range. Uh, this is probably the, my favorite part of using custom parameters is that we can set adequate ranges. So as I mentioned, if this goes back to one, it's way too much. Zero is too less. So we just have a really small range here that we can set up. And that's why I can say here, my default will be 0 0.025. And that will be also my minimum. And then my maximum could be 0 
If I go back to my parameter, I have the speed, and you see that the value is much smaller. So I can, again, copy the parameter, paste it here. Now I have a speed reference that is a lot better. It's much smoother, it's easier to work with. Now let's see what else um, I had here. We also have the resolution, for example, and that would be actually it. So that was quite easy. And I would probably recommend the resolution like we did the menu. So what you can do is to drag directly the resolution and you can set it as a reference as well. And you will have it here. And then we can change it, for example, at this resolution, which is the maximum you can do in a non-commercial license of the designer. And then you can see that we set up quite nice network and basically a component that contains all the parameters instead of using a chop. It's also great because if we want to have a specific control of this, we can have it and we can also add a lot of other things. For example, I can set certain parameters to be read only so you cannot interact with it. And we can use it as a data container as well. We can reorganize the parameters by different sections. So we can create new pages. So one could be for the looks, for example. And then this page, we can reorganize our a specific parameter so our color can come to the looks and the type of our wave as well and then you can see that you can have a lot more control of how you want your parameters to be ordered organized and ordered and i think overall this is a much better way to approach it something else that i wanted to show is that once you have your custom component with the parameters is that you can also call them so you can use the parameter chop and you can select the base one wherever you store your parameters and what you can see is that you will get actually the same structure as the chop so if you are used to drag and drop these specific values like this you can also do it so you can just instead of um, connecting this specific parameter you can connect this one uh, and that would be the same as using this one and dragging it here and use it as a reference. I hope this was useful and see you next time.